stop going to the gym and having no clue what you're doing. You need to have a plan and a good one at that. All right, so thanks for tuning in again. And today we're talking about when you know it programming. Um, in previous videos, we talked about tips on starting your fitness journey and kind of a really important part of that is actually when you get to the gym, knowing what you're doing. And so today we're going to cover some of those uh, things on what to consider when programming your own exercise plan or your own exercise program for that matter. All right. So designing your workout plan. I don't know how many of you are starting a new, you know, a new program, or maybe it's your first time in the gym or you've been in the gym before and you kind of have an idea of what you're doing, but never really understood what splits are or, um, what exercises maybe pair better together or just a general sense of what do you do when you show up? Um, you see these giant dudes on the squat rack squatting 400 plus pounds, deadlifting 400 plus pounds, benching a ton of weight, um, a bunch of machines at the gym, a bunch of cardio equipment, dumbbells, kettlebells, bands, um, TRX straps, what have you. There's a whole plethora of different gym equipment. And if you're someone who's new to the gym and you have no idea like what any of this stuff is or how do you get started? Well, this video is for you. One thing that we need to consider or ask ourselves is, you know, what, what is your training experience? And, um, you know, do you even understand like basic exercises? Like I just mentioned the squat or a hinge, which is kind of like a deadlift movement, um, pressing and, um, pulling or rowing as we would call it. And to compound that question, you know, how many years, um, have you trained? Also, have you ever utilized a trainer or a coach or have you even gone to like fitness classes before and, you know, done some of these movements. Um, if you've answered no, or you have zero experience, then you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to start from square one, which is totally fine. Cause everyone has to start somewhere. The guys you see at the gym that are bench pressing, squatting, deadlifting, a ton of weight. Um, they started from, you know, square one as well, learning how to do the movement and figuring out how do I, how to design a program that's going to get them to the level they're at where they're bench pressing, deadlifting, squatting a whole lot of weight. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Even the guys you see that are Olympic weightlifters or, you know, even like the guys in the strongman. Uh, one of the biggest things is kind of understanding what even splits are. I mean, I've said that already and some people might even be like, I don't even know what that means. Like split, what are we splitting? Um, so a splits, basically it's, it's how we're going to organize um, our training regimen for each a given workout. It's going to help us determine training frequency. You know, how many days per week are we going to work out? Uh, not everyone can lift six or seven days a week, nor should you. Um, but that's for you to decide in your own lifestyle. You know, how much time can I allocate to going to the gym and, and exercising? Um, and that's going to help determine our splits. So splits define kind of what our, what our major focus is for our training, such as lower body versus upper body, Olympic recovery, recovery workouts, circuit training, cardio focus, what have you. Lower body can also, you know, we can, we can dive deeper into that and say lower body can be um, divided up into knee focused or like knee movements um, or squat focus or um, hinging, which would be more deadlifting or hip. So knee versus hip. And then we can also divide upper body into a couple of different things as well. Pressing, horizontal pressing, which would be like a bench press, overhead pressing, like military press or push press or something like that. Or we can do a horizontal pull, horizontal pull, which would um, be more pertaining to like a row. Or we can do overhead pull, which would be like, you know, cable pull downs or even pull ups. So kind of what splits help us do is they kind of help us have a theme for what we're doing that day um, in that week. People that are well versed in the fitness industry know that there's different kind of cycles like mesocycles, microcycles, macro cycles, which kind of pertain to like all the way down to like a day to the week, to the month, to the phase and to the year. Um, but that's more so for, um, more advanced lifters or people that are involved in college athletics, stuff like that, that they have to train year round. Um, again, you're training year round too. So this, this does pertain to you as well. Um, something else to take into consideration outside of, you know, our splits, you know, if we have a good understanding of what our splits are and, um, you know, having a theme and, and our training frequency, that's something you need to kind of decide, you know, what, what kind of time commitment can you make? Um, everyone's busy. They have families, they have jobs, you know, they have social lives. So being realistic is going to help determine your splits and help you design 
a workout program that is going to make the most sense for you and benefit you the most. So the next thing that we're going to kind of talk about is, you know, volume. Volume matters a lot. Um, going into the gym and trying to do like 10 sets of 10, like the old German style volume training really isn't that effective and it's going to burn you out pretty quick. It's going to leave you crawling out of the gym, which that's not the idea of going to the gym is, or training for that matter is not trying to kill yourself to get stronger or in better shape. Total reps for a given movement is important for recovery and avoiding um, what we would call overtraining, um, where we can actually overtax our muscles and more importantly, our central nervous system, which is going to be the driving force behind, you know, strength. Another thing that we can talk about is like compound lifts, um, like the squat, deadlift, bench press, anything that's multi-joint, that's a compound. Um, it's not a single joint exercise. Those need to have their reps monitored because as we just, just mentioned, compound, meaning multiple joints are going to um, affect more than one muscle group. And so monitoring um, how much weight and how many um, sets and reps that we're doing for those movements is going to be important uh, throughout the week. Because again, we don't want to overtrain, we don't want to cause injury, and we don't want to tax our nervous, our central nervous system to the point of no return. Um, especially if you're starting out, it's gonna, you're gonna want to give yourself 24 to 48 hours in between, you know, doing a compound lift like a squat. So if you're gonna do a, lo like a lower body day, you don't want to go and do deadlift the next day if you just squatted the day before. You may want to wait maybe a day in between or on your next day do an upper body workout. And then maybe take a day in between and do another low, lower body workout. And then you've had 48 hours at least between lower body movements, which will help the central nervous system not get overtaxed, as we've already mentioned, and allow those muscle groups to recover. Another one to consider, this one gets overused a lot, and that's core. People think they have to do core for everything. Well, did you know that if you're doing compound, heavy compound lifts like a squat or a deadlift, you are utilizing your core pretty heavily because your body is having to maintain that erect position to hold that weight and not crumble into itself. Doing 30 reps of squat, you have to think you've done 30 reps of core. So does it make sense to do maybe a whole lot of core movement or maybe focusing more on like a breathing exercise? If we're talking about programming. We got to talk about exercise selection. So if you're watching this video and you're newer to the gym or you're maybe only have a year of training under your belt. Does it make sense for you to be maybe jumping right into doing, um, bilateral squats or, you know, back squats, conventional back squats, or should you be someone that's starting with maybe like a split squat, um, with a dumbbell, like a goblet hold and learning how to get into the correct position, getting the correct muscles, um, activated and working and activating your core correctly and breathing properly and then and then progressing to a back squat or a front squat or a goblet squat. These are there's a lot of things to take into consideration because you know you join a gym, you go in there and you see a bunch of people on on the squat rack and they're all squatting a lot of weight and you want to be doing that. And of course, you want to get there. Many factors play into this. Um, and for example, one would be like something we would call FAI or femoral anterior impingement. And one way you, you, a lot of people will find out if they have an impingement is if they have pain and pinching in their, the anterior side of their hip when they're performing a squatting movement, or if, if someone's doing an internal external rotation test on their hip, should I be bilateral squatting or should I be unilateral squatting and kind of, you know, fixing those deficits, addressing those deficits before I decide to put weight on my back or in a front squat position. So progressions are a really good tool as well. Um, as well our regressions, you know, if you're going into a different phase, you know, sometimes if you've been back squatting for a couple of months, you know, sometimes going and utilizing a regression to kind of, you know, recover and prepare yourself for a ne the next phase of lifting can be super helpful and allowing your body to kind of recover and kind of what we'd call like an active recovery, develop a new baseline. We call that like a super compensation curve, uh, which I'll show a graphic of what that looks like. So some progressions that you can kind of think about or kind of consider are we kind of talked about with like the split squat, the goblet squat, front squat, back squat. That would be like a progression from um, unilateral to bilateral. Um, as we mentioned earlier, if you're someone who's a beginner and you don't know where to start, um, if we're looking at bench pressing or like a horizontal press, you know, maybe starting out with a dumbbell bench 
and then moving into a bilateral dumbbell bench press and then moving to the bench press. And then for rows, maybe starting with a half kneeling cable row, learning how to effectively row, do the movement where you're actually utilizing your scapula and you're not just, sh- you know, shrugging or whatever and performing the movement properly before actually going to the bench and doing like a three point stance row or a neon bench or even like just a standing row um, all the way to doing a bent over barbell row or a penley row. Being able to start from the very basic part of the movement and mastering the movement and then adding strength on top of that is going to be the most effective for you getting stronger and putting on muscle and then being able to move or move on to these more advanced um, exercises. Again, progressions can also be, you know, a variation. Um, Like instead of doing, you know, like a goblet squat, you can move to a lateral squat or a lateral lunge. We can do a Jefferson lunge. Again, all these progressions can be added in once we get the movement down and we've mastered those movements and we're kind of plateauing and we're looking for something new or we just want to kind of change it up in the gym. Progressions can be a great way to do that. Core is an interesting concept. So like, I'm sure if you go to the gym, you see a bunch of people that do sit-ups. Sit-ups aren't probably the best thing to do in the gym. There's a modified sit-up that McGill teaches, Stuart McGill, who's um, an expert in kind of um, the anatomy of the back and um, helping to keep people from injuring their back and ways to activate their core and turn off their lower back and whatnot. Stuart McGill is a great great resource to look up. Um, So I would say if you're learn, you want to learn how to do core the proper way, I would say start with dead bugs. Uh, It's actually a pretty tough core exercise that even advanced people still, advanced lifters still do um, in their daily um, splits and programming. Again, with core, it's learning how to keep your core engaged and staying out of lumbar extension, which can cause you to have a cranky, what we call like a cranky lower back. Um, And also teaches you how to get into a more efficient position where our rib cage is actually stacked over the pelvis. Um, I'm getting into a little bit more of the physiology and anatomy part, but um, these are just examples. Um, other things that we can we can do is 360 breathing, which will help you to engage your core as well as learn proper breathing mechanics, which I know is a crazy thing to say, but breathing mechanics are going to be um, pretty important if you want to have a strong core and um honestly be able to recover better. Um, another core, another aspect of the core that people don't consider is anti-rotation and rotational core. So like payoff pressing or cable, um, cable lifts and, um, cable chops. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, oblique work for hip stability, that's going to be huge for deadlifting and squatting, um, which that involves like side planks, off bench, oblique holds, side lying trunk lifts, what have you. There's, a thousand exercises that can be explored. And when it comes to programming, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, but there's also more effective ways to programming and in, in exercise selection and controlling, um, controlling your volume and monitoring your volume. Again, so we don't overtax the central nervous system and make life miserable and therefore make it so you don't want to go to the gym. When it comes to, you know, Again, like I mentioned, there's a thousand, a thousand exercises to be explored, a thousand ways to skin a cat. We do not want to get the carriage in front of the horse. So we want to be able to uh, effectively select the appropriate exercises um, for ourselves, for our skill level, um, and for our ultimate goal. Another thing that people that gets people in trouble is um, having this one rep max mentality, where we want to go into the gym, we want to lift as much weight as we can for one rep, um, we kind of call that like ego, ego lifting, E-G-O, not eagle. Sounded like I said eagle, but ego lifting, uh, which is a great way to get hurt. So instead, what we should focus on is let's say you one day you're squatting 225, you get it for three. And it's like one of the hardest things you've done. It's a nine out of 10 on the rating of perceived exertion scale. And let's say you come back two weeks later and you're able to get it five times. That's the kind of progress you want to be making, turning like a three rep max into a five rep max. Let's live for longevity, not for ego. All right. And so here's some things to, uh, some easy templates to consider for, um, for your splits. Again, it's all going to depend on how many, you know, how frequently you want to exercise. So like a four day split is super simple Two lower body two upper body. You can have a squat day, a deadlift day, a bench press day, and then like a 
overhead pole or a horizontal pole. Or what you can do is you can have like a squat day, a deadlift day, and then you can have a bench press day and an overhead pressing day. And then on your bench press day and your um, overhead pressing day, you can also add in like the horizontal pull or overhead pull. I'm sorry. And that would be a way that you could kind of get your hip knee push pull. All right. That's kind of, you know, that's one thing to consider too, is like, if you don't know what to do and you're in the gym, again, that's the whole point of this video, hip knee push pull K I S S keep it simple, stupid. All right. If you're having a three day split, you could do a one, one lower day, one upper day and one total body day, or you could do one lower body day or one upper body day. And then you could have two total body days. And again, on those total body days, that template I just gave you, keep it simple, stupid hip, knee, push, pull, right? So you can do like a single leg deadlift, or you can do a reverse lunge or a split squat or a lateral squat, dumbbell bench and dumbbell row right there, hip, knee, push, pull, and then pick a core exercise, dead bugs. We don't have to do 10 exercises, right? Five to six exercises, three to four sets starting out, four to six reps per um, per set. That's plenty of volume for you starting out. And if you're doing a two two day split, keep it simple. Two total body days, right? And if you want to do five or six days, you could you know, delegate one day to a circuit day, a recovery lift, focusing on five to ten exercises with low to moderate weight, and um, focusing on getting perfect reps. And your kind of your idea there is getting a good sweat going. Or you can delegate one day to just doing a recreation, recreational activity like riding your bike through the park, going on a walk through the park, or playing pickleball, playing basketball, you know, just something that's physical activity. Um, or you can have just be a cardio day where you do, um, you know, like a long, long, slow distance run or a stationary bike, like a rogue bike. A lot of times people also will try to do like bodybuilding splits where you try to focus on one muscle group. For some people, that's totally, you know, that works totally fine. But for a lot of people who can only work out three to four days a week because they have busy lives with work, family, social life, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that's kind of harder to do if you're going to try and focus on one muscle group and you only have three or four days to work out. So that's why focusing on more of like upper and lower body movements um, as the theme for the day and then building it from there can make it super easy. And like, if you're doing a lower body day and it's a squat day, you can have it be like, uh, your, your squat lift is going to be a goblet squat. Um, and then for your B1 and B2 exercises, you could do like a reverse lunge and core hip thrust. And then you could do curls or something, or even like, um, a breathing exercise, right? You know, it doesn't have to be a lower body lift every single, um, exercise that you do. A lot of times what you want to do is mix in accessory work, right? Like the breathing mechanics, um, like a trap raise single joint. That's not going to be super taxing or even doing like curls and triceps and, and stuff like that. And so for like a squat day, you could do like a single leg RDL to start. You can start with an RDL learning the hinge movement and you could have your B1, B2 be like a split squat or a forward lunge or a lateral lunge or a lateral squat paired with like a side plank. And then after that, you could do another one of those exercises that I just mentioned, and you can pair that with a breathing drill and call it a day or triceps and curls. And for your upper body day, you could do dumbbell bench press. Your B1, B2 could be half kneeling cable row with a core exercise, like a payoff press, like, an, like which would be the anti-rotation. And your C1, C2 could be push-ups, band resisted external rotation. And on your overhead day, you could do half kneeling overhead dumbbell press, single arm half kneeling overhead press. And then you could do a half kneeling cable pull down, um, single arm, or, or you could do both arms or like a lat pull down. Um, you could couple that with um, another core exercise. You could do dead bugs again, or you could do bear crawls, slow bear crawls, bird dogs, a McGill single leg crunch. And you could couple that with a standing cable row. All right. Well, thanks for checking out this quick video on programming. Um, just wanted to make something quick, get some, some more info out there. Uh, if there's anything else that you want me to cover, then go ahead and drop me a comment, message me, whatever. Um, I think future videos, I'm going to cover some volume, go in more in depth than that and the different kind of volumes, um, that we kind of focus on and with training. Um, I can go into more squatting, uh, video on squatting, video on deadlifting. So we'll probably go down though. We'll venture down those avenues here in the future, but this is YouTube. So I have to say, give me a like and a subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.